last week, we learned about the digestive system. The digestive system breaks down food into nutrients that the body can use and then gets rid of waste that the body can't use. Some parts of the digestive system include the tongue, the esophagus, the stomach, large and small intestines, and another part that we talked about was the liver. The job of the liver is to clean the blood that pumps through the rest of the body. Today, we are going to learn about organs that work in the excretory system. First, let's go over some vocabulary words. Our first word is toxic. A toxic substance is poisonous. It will kill or injure living things. Chocolate can be toxic to some pets, even though it's safe for humans. Another thing that is toxic to humans and insects alike is insect spray. Gasoline is also toxic and so is drain cleaner. However, milk and cookies are not toxic. Regulate. To regulate means to control something. For example, some of you might have parents that regulate how much TV you get to watch every day. Excrete. Excrete means to force out or get rid of. Sweat. Sweat is moisture that comes out of the skin's pores due to exercise, fever, heat, or fear. It's also called perspiration. For example, your body may excrete sweat after you run in a relay race. Bladder. The bladder is a balloon-like sac in which urine collects before it is excreted from the body. When you drink lots of water, your bladder will fill up very quickly. Maintain. Maintain means to keep something the same way. Road workers do construction on our roads to maintain them, keep them working the way they're supposed to. Students who maintain good grades usually do so by always completing their homework and studying for tests. See if you can think of something that you have to do to maintain something else. Humans are exposed to lots of toxins or poisons in the environment. Your body may take in toxins through the air or through the food that you eat. If these toxins hang around in your body for too long, they may become toxic or poisonous to you. The amazing human body has ways of getting rid of these toxins before they become harmful. The last time we met, you learned how your digestive system works to process food into usable nutrients, separating the nutrients from the sometimes toxic waste materials. At the end of the digestive process, some food is not completely broken down by the intestines. This leftover solid waste, called feces, is pushed out of your anus at the end of the digestive tract. Bowel movements contain your body's solid waste, but what happens to the body's liquid waste? Where does it go? Some waste leave, leaves your body through your skin. Other waste is processed through a system like the digestive system. Just as the digestive system processes solid waste, there is a system that processes liquid waste. It is called the excretory system. To excrete means to expel or get rid of something that is not needed. Toxins or poisons are definitely not needed in your body. Let's begin by talking about the liquid waste that leaves your body through your skin. We call it sweat. What's another name for sweat? It is also called perspiration. You already know that your skin is the largest body organ. It covers your entire body surface. Sweat glands below the surface of the skin help rid the body of waste through perspiration. When you perspire, water, salt, and other waste flows out through these microscopic sweat glands. If these sweat glands are microscopic, does that mean that we can see them with the naked eye? No, we would need a microscope to see them. They are all excreted. They are excreted from all parts of your body. If you do not bathe for a while, you can begin to smell this waste as it builds up on the surface of your skin. 
The body's main liquid waste is urine, sometimes called pee. Urine is clear, cleaner than spit. Unlike the saliva in your mouth, urine contains no bacteria. It is about 96% water and 4% waste. This means that if urine were divided into 100 parts, 96 parts would be water and only four parts would be waste. Like feces, urine passes through several different organs as it makes its journey through your body. Today, we will take a look at the organs that are part of the excretory system. The kidneys are the primary organs of excretion. Stand up for a minute and we'll make sure that you know where your kidneys are located. While you're standing, let your arms hang by your sides. Your kidneys are in line with your elbows, at your back, above your waist. Reach around and place, place your hands just above your waist on either side of your backbone. Your two kid kidneys hang near your spine, one on either side of your backbone, in the middle of your back. Your bottom ribs and layers of fat protect the kidneys. Go ahead and sit down. We know where they are now. Let's see if, how they work. Arteries, or muscular tubes, carry blood from other parts of your body to your kidneys. These two dark red bean-shaped organs act like washing machines for the blood, cleaning it of waste and toxins. As blood flows to your body cells, it passes through the kidneys where millions of tiny microscopic fil filter tubes capture the waste products and excess water. Think of a kitchen strainer or a sieve. Have you ever seen cooked pasta poured into a strainer? The liquid flows through and the strainer catches the pasta. Your kidneys act a little like that kitchen strainer. They filter or separate the liquid waste from the blood. Clean blood travels to your body cells while the liquid waste called urine is collected in each kidney. Urine drains out of both kidneys through two tubes called ureters. The ureters lead from the kidneys to your urinary bladder. The bladder is a muscular storage bag located in the lower part of your abdomen, which is below your waist. When it gets full, we can feel it. This stretchy sac-like muscle stores urine. It is a little like a water balloon with three openings, two ureters that connect to the kidneys, and a third opening at the other end of the bladder called the urethra. As urine passes into the bladder through the ureters, the walls stretch and the rubbery balloon begins to fill. Nerve endings in the muscular bladder walls send signals to the brain that the bladder is full and about to burst. That's when you know it is time to urinate. Urine passes out of your body through the urethra, the tube at the bottom of the bladder. Just like the anus, the urethra has a muscular gate called the sphincter muscle that opens and closes to let the urine pass. When the sphincter muscle is tightened, urine stays in the bladder. When it is relaxed, urine is released. This is a voluntary muscle, meaning that you are able to control its opening and closing, but you need to listen to your brain when it tells you that it is time to go to the bathroom. The excretory system works the same for both boys and girls. The only difference is in the length of the urethra. The urethra is longer in boys than it is in girls. In addition to preparing liquid waste for removal from the body, the kidneys also regulate or control the amount of salt and nutrients in the blood. They help to maintain a state of balance in the body by controlling the amount of water your body loses, balancing the amount of water excreted with the amount of water kept in the body. If you have too much water in the body, you may feel bloated or swollen. If there is too little, in the, little water in the body, you may become dehydrated or dried out. Dehydration can cause serious damage to your body. That is why it is important to drink lots of water, never letting your body dry out. Let's name all the different parts of the excretory system. The excretory system is made up of the kidneys, the bladder, the two tubes that connect them, the ureters, and the urethra, the final tube in the process. 
It may appear less complicated than the digestive system, but it is just as important for filtering the blood and helping your body get rid of toxic substances. You probably know that liquid waste is excreted from your body a bit more frequently than solid waste. That's because it does not stay in the, bla in the bladder as long as solid waste stays in the rectum. We've been talking a lot about getting rid of the body's waste, but along the way, you have learned that the body turns a lot of the food that you eat into nourishment and provides your body with the energy that it needs to grow and repair itself. What are the good parts that are carried through your blood and stored in your body? They're called nutrients. Next time, we'll find out just exactly what nutrients are and what you can do to make sure that you are getting enough of them. See you next time. Until then, make sure that you listen to your body and respond when it sends you messages. That's really important to maintaining good health. All right, my friends, today we talked about the excretory system. What is the purpose or function of the excretory system? What is its job? You got it. Its job is to rid our body of toxins and waste. We talked about two different ways that our body gets rid of liquid waste. What are those two ways we get rid of liquid waste? And which way is the primary or main way? One way that we get rid of liquid waste is through our sweat. And the second way we get rid of liquid waste is through our urine. Which of those is the main way we get rid of liquid waste? You've got it. Urine is the main way. Yesterday, we talked about the digestive system. How are the digestive system and the excretory system similar? What is the same about them? One thing that I thought of on how they're similar is that they both get rid of waste in our body. How are they different? What are some differences between the digestive and excretory systems? There are a couple of things you could have said there. We talked about how one thing they're, one way they're similar is that they both get rid of waste. One way they're different is that the digestive system gets rid of solid waste and the excretory system deals with liquid waste. Also, the digestive system processes waste, but it also is focused on getting nutrients for the body but the excretory is only focused on getting rid of waste. Based on what we read today, do you think that it's important to drink lots of water? Is there something from what we read today that could prove your opinion on why or why not it's important to drink lots of water? See if you can think of something from our read aloud today that would prove your point. Alright, my friends. Go ahead and open up the PDF. Uh, attach this assignment again. I am going to jump over to my computer and I will show you what to do next. 
we have got a lot of different parts to our assignment today. Three different parts, three different th things that we will be working on. Our first couple we will work on together. And our very first one isn't about what we learned today, but about what we learned in our last lesson about the digestive system. On this first part, we have a picture that shows all of the different parts in our digestive system. At the top, we have a box with all of those, with the labels or names of all of those parts. Our job is to use those words to correctly label each part of the digestive system. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so we can see better. All right, let's start at the very beginning of our digestive system. Before we, we can digest the food that we eat, we need to eat our food. This process starts in the mouth. We have two labels in the mouth. This one is pointing to these bones at the front of the mouth that help us chew our food. What are those bones? You've got it. Those are teeth. We'll go ahead and label that one as teeth. This one, our other one pointing to the mouth, is pointing to this right here. What is that pointing to? This helps produce saliva that softens our food into a paste that's easier to digest. And that is the tongue. After our tongue and our teeth work to soften up our food, it travels down this tube, which is called, you got it, the esophagus. The esophagus takes our food from our mouth all the way down to this organ. In this organ, there are gastric juices that break down our food. What is this organ? That organ is the stomach. After food, goes through the stomach and is broken down, it travels into one of our intestines. Is it our large or small intestine? It goes through small first. Our small intestine is in the middle here, and it is long and winding, lots of twists and turns. After it finishes going through the small intestine, it travels over here into the large intestine. Then it is stored inside the rectum until it's ready to pass through the anus out of the body. All right, let's jump to our next one. Our next one, we've got a very similar format. We're going to be doing the same thing. We've got a picture of our urinary system that we learned about today. Our job is going to be to label all of these different parts with the words in the box. You'll notice that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six lines, but only four words. So two of our words we'll use twice. Two of them are going to be doubled. All right, let's see if we can figure out how to correctly label our urinary system. We're going to start at the top with these two organs. Remember these two we only need, we have, humans have two of them, but we only need one to survive. We can survive with just one. So this is an organ that can be donated or given to someone else. 
while you are still alive, and you can continue to live. This organ is a kidney. So we've got one kidney right here, and one kidney right here. Our urine passes through the kidneys, and then it travels down these tubes into this organ. We need to label these tubes, just like our kidneys. These will have the same name. Do you remember what these tubes are called? This one's tricky because we've got two words that start with U that sound very similar. These tubes that travel from the kidneys to our next organ are called ureters. So we're going to label each of these as a ureter. There we go. So our, we start with the kidneys. It travels through the kidneys through the ureters down to this organ where it is stored for a while until it is ready to be released outside of the body. Where, what is this organ called? That organ is the bladder. That organ is the bladder. Our urine will sit in the bladder for a while until it is ready to be released outside of our body. When we release it outside, it travels through this part, which is our other tricky U word, our urethra. Our urethra carries that urine outside of our body when we're ready. All right, we reviewed our digestive system and our urinary system all together. The last part of our assignment, I want you to do on your own. The last part of our assignment is our journal entry for today. Again, just like with our last lesson, we don't have as many lines for our journal on this one. We've got our diagram that is taking up most of the space. So for this journal entry, just like our last lesson, we are only going to do two or three complete sentences. Make sure those sentences have a subject and a predicate. Make sure they make sense. Make sure they start with a capital letter and end with a final mark. Those sentences should be about the excretory system. Tell me some things that you learned about the excretory system today. When you are finished with your sentences and you've correctly labeled your diagrams, go ahead and turn this assignment in and we'll see you next time.